Unit 6, Day 2, Altitudes, Medians, and Mid-Segments of Triangles. An altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment that goes from a vertex to its opposite side. So this segment right here goes through this vertex and it's perpendicular to the opposite side of the triangle. When you take a look at this triangle, if you were to take this vertex and try to draw a perpendicular segment to this side, because of this obtuse angle, we're not allowed to do that. So we actually need to extend this side so that we can drop an altitude outside of the triangle. If you find all three altitudes of the three sides of a triangle, so from this vertex B, perpendicular to side AC, from vertex A, perpendicular to side BC, and from vertex C, perpendicular to side AB, those three altitudes will intersect at a point P called the orthocenter. There are no special mathematical properties for the orthocenter. A median of a triangle is a segment whose endpoints are vertex and midpoint of the opposite side. So if you were to take this side and find the midpoint of it and connect it to the opposite vertex, you have this median. When you find all three medians of a triangle, so you take this side, AC, you find the midpoint to cut AE and EC congruent and connect that midpoint to the opposite vertex B. And you take the midpoint of BC, connect that midpoint to the opposite vertex A. And then you take AB and you find that midpoint and connect it to the opposite vertex C. Those three medians are going to intersect at a point called the centroid. The special property of the centroid is that it's two-thirds the distance from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So however long BE is, BD is, or sorry, BP is going to be two-thirds that distance. And then PE is going to be the other third. So BP is two-thirds. And then we have the segment PE is the other third. If you were to compare PE to segment BP, PE would be half of BP. This example asks us to use the figure shown and the given information. It tells us that L is the centroid of triangle MNO. That means that L is the intersection of the point of concurrency for the median. So MP is a median, which makes P a midpoint, so that NP and PO are congruent. NQ is a median which makes P, I mean Q the midpoint so that MQ and QO are congruent. And then OR is the other median which makes R the midpoint of MN so that MR and RN are congruent. Now we're going to take the information given to us and then we're going to label it. LQ is equal to 4 ML is equal to 10, MN is 14, so this entire length is going to be 14, and then RO, this entire segment is going to be 18. Now, I don't, I want to be careful about labeling this, so I'm just going to underline this over here so that we make sure to take note of that later. When we're trying to find the missing segments, you want to remember what it means to be a median. When they're asking for the segment LP, remember ML is two-thirds of MP. So that means LP is one-third. If LP is one-third, it's going to be half of ML. So since ML is 10, LP is going to be half of that, 5. If we're looking for NL, NL is the segment from vertex to the centroid. So that's going to be double centroid to the midpoint. So if centroid to midpoint is 4, vertex to centroid is going to be double. That's 8. So this one's going to be 8. And then RL, we're looking for this segment. Now this is from midpoint to centroid. And that's one-third of the entire segment RO. Here we have RO is 18, 
So if we want one third, we just need to divide that by three and we get six. So our L is gonna be six. Then we need to find NO. NO is the length from N all the way over here to O. Now we know that P is the midpoint. If NP is 11, that means PO is also 11. So NO is gonna be 22. MR is gonna be this segment. We have MN, the whole thing is 14. If it gets divided into two equal segments, this is gonna be seven. So MR is equal to seven. A mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides. So these are going to be a little different. They're not going to be like our other four sets of concurrent lines with points of concurrency. In this one, we are finding the midpoint of one side, midpoint of another side, and we're actually just going to connect those together to create a mid-segment. When you connect all three mid-segments of a triangle, you create this other triangle inside. So the segments connecting the midpoints, the special property is that this segment is going to be parallel to and half as long as that third side. So FD is going to be parallel to AC and it's also going to be half the length of AC. This mid-segment FE is going to be parallel to BC and half the length of BC. This segment DE is going to be parallel to BA and going to be half the length of BA. In this example, it tells us to use the diagram of triangle ABC where D, E, and F are the midpoints of the sides. So if D, E, and F are the midpoints, that means that D cuts segment AB in half, F cuts segment AC in half, and then E cuts segment BC in half. So those are the markings we want to make. Now, the other thing that we know are the sides that are parallel. So we have here line segment DE, which is this one, is going to be, let's mark this. So we have this segment DE is going to be parallel to AC. So I'll mark here, oops, AC. And then we have line segment FE is going to be parallel to AB. Oops, missed that last part. So we can say that FE is parallel to AB. Then it says if AB is equal to 14, so this entire segment is 14, it wants to know what's the length of EF. Remember, EF is going to be half of AB. So since AB is 14, EF will be 7. And then it tells us that BE, this segment right here, is 8. Then it wants to know the length of DF. Now here's the thing. BE is half of BC. That means that this whole segment is going to be 16. And then DF is half of BC, so half of 16 is going to be 8. Then lastly, it tells us if that DE is 6, that segment, and it wants to know the length of AC. DE is 6, and that's half of AC, so 2 times 6 is going to be 12. So sorry my penmanship was a little messy. Um, my slate that I'm writing with seems to be a little glitchy, but I hope you can make out the numbers that I wrote down. That's all for today. Make sure you study altitudes, medians, and mid-segments. I'll see you in class.